What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. So this is a highly requested video. We see your comment, man. We see it. <laughs> I think uh, hashtag sup has been commenting on all our videos. When are we gonna do another tortoise video? Well, today's the day. So Kyle, we're back in your greenhouse. Yes. Walk the people through kind of what's going through. For those that are new here, this mm -hmm. is the tortoise filled greenhouse. But this for, is a tortoise greenhouse. Can yeah. I walk them through this? Uh, yeah, this is a greenhouse for tortoises. So, um, so this, yeah, so it's similar to the crocodile ones that you guys have seen the other property, um, but this has a white roof, so it doesn't get so hot. So the greenhouse uh, utilized for the um, crocodiles is to actually stay warmer in the winter. But actually the greenhouse for the tortoises I utilize to stay cooler in the summer because these guys can overheat very easily. Um, but obviously they still want to enjoy the Florida, whoa, <laughs> the Florida sunshine. Um, so that's why you see, this is exactly how I open it. I open a little bit, so they'll have a little spots of sun, which that'll continually move throughout the day, but the majority of it's shaded, so it's safer for them. So tortoise greenhouse to keep them cooler in the summer, but it also does help with the temperatures. You don't get those crazy low spikes um, at night, even with the cold. Uh, so it is, so it's best of both worlds for these guys. Crush is looking way more mobile. So walk yeah. the people through kind of who Crush is too. Yeah, so he's an Aldabra tortoise. He came approximately, came here probably three years ago. Uh, when he came here, he had zero mobility of his back legs. And a friend of mine, when he got him, he had zero mobility pretty much in general. Uh, so we've just slowly rehabbing him. Uh, obviously the sun helps tremendously. This guy, I believe he just didn't have the proper diet, didn't have proper UV. Um, so yeah, I mean, he's, he's not too far gone. So that's why we're rehabbing him here. And as we, as you can see, we call him crush because his shell looks much more of a sea turtle shape than, than an Aldabra tortoise, but he is doing awesome here. He actually had like a more of a rehab enclosure last one. It was much smaller so he could get to the water easier. He could get to, uh, his hide house this heated house for the winter um, and there was nice big hills and everything for him to really work those legs um, he's doing really well so we opened them up in here and we still have some hills still have some um, essentially areas that he can utilize for physical therapy but he is overall doing really well and this will be his forever home basically at this point. oh yeah yeah he's not going anywhere but he eats a ton so the beauty of these enclosures is they have grass all the time, so they can always munch around. But we always use, we always like to at least supplement stuff, um, and we feed them twice a week. This guy is a tank. And he's so, just walking over and just keeps like almost tipping. Yeah, we usually have calcium, but we ran out of calcium. So, but this guy really benefits from the calcium too. I mean, he's looking good. He's looking way better than he did uh, exactly. when we first yeah. got him. Yeah. So he's he's doing really awesome. Um, I'm really happy with his progress and hopefully it continues to improve. But honestly, man, he gets around this whole enclosure uh, all the time. So he's, I mean, he's living a good life. So in here is the red foots and sulcata. So what we'll do is it's much like the crocodiles where once they hear one, you know, we're, we're doing the feeding process because again, they get fed twice a week. So they knew, they know the sounds of being fed, but they're a lot slower than crocodiles. So um, what we'll do is we'll feed everybody and see who's out. And then what we'll do is at the end, uh, it's a little guys, so they'll eat right away cause they're a much smaller enclosure. Uh, and then we'll work our way back and see who's back eating. And you have a few empty enclosures, right? Yes. Um, but that's the thing is, I mean, these things are, these enclosures are so expansive. We're actually going to split a couple just because we have a lot, a uh, lot more different groups, smaller groups than we, uh, previously anticipated. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start sectioning a couple of them off, but still have all these will remain the same. So it's not like we're cutting this guy's room up, cutting Crush's room up. They'll all stay the same, but a lot of baby tortoises, a lot of groups that are, you know, a couple animals. So there's no reason to have this giant enclosure because the problem is too, is if they can't maintain it themselves, then it just becomes so overgrown. So believe it or not guys, like I was saying, uh, earlier with them not being able to maintain the enclosure. So this is, these were rescue tortoises and they're all smaller tortoises and there's only one adult in here. Uh, you can't even see them, I can't even see them. So that's the issue as you can see, 
how it's starting to get overgrown. It's no longer just grasses. It's, you know, all these weeds and whatnot really popping up. So this is an enclosure that, not the enclosure, but this is a group that we can certainly split um, into a smaller enclosure. They aren't the best at utilizing the middle ground um, until they're really settled in. So yeah, there's no reason for this big of an enclosure for little guys. Obviously when they're adults, we'll move them back in this enclosure, but the biggest thing too is making sure they get all the proper nutrients. So like I said before, we don't have it today, but we put calcium powder on this. Now, obviously if they're eating all this and they can't find this, they're not getting the calcium powder. So, so this is another rescue tortoise. This one is Bug, the Sulcata tortoise. And he came from Utah. Now, this is another candidate that would, what I believe would benefit from a smaller enclosure just because, as you can see, he is not utilizing the space at all. Uh, and again, I, I, watch the tor I watch the tortoises just like I watch the crocs. So um, essentially they tell me where they utilize and what they like. So this guy, like staying at the back, he usually just comes in and out of his house. You can see he's been digging a little bit there. He really doesn't come out all too much. He loves his giant house. So he would be perfectly fine in the enclosure a quarter of the size. And yeah, again, just to ensure he gets the calcium and everything. It's still a big enclosure, even oh, yeah. a quarter of the size. Yeah. Because how, how big are these enclosures? Just so the people that haven't watched our other videos can know. I think these are 30 by 25. Very big. Yeah, they are. They're huge, especially for one sub-adult sulcata. So it is very very big so this is a guy that you know one day will be ready for something like this but even then again if he's not mowing all the grass if he's not keeping it down uh, and he's getting plenty of exercise there's no reason to have this big of an enclosure so the biggest thing is making sure they get the calcium and making sure at least you know they're able to do whatever they want to do and have a space for that but there is a point which i believe with Ford says that it's it's excessive and it's unnecessary it's risky because again with it could flip over and you don't see them even though we have this you know accidents still can happen you know it still miraculously could flip over in the sun we mitigate most of the risks but there's still some risks that are in play because again they're still going to get a little bit of sun uh, so again that's something that we could mitigate too is not having such a big enclosure just so we can assure um, health checks uh, and like safety checks yep, for the animals. Yep, safety checks, diet, making sure all that. So again, I'm all about huge enclosures as you guys know, but sometimes it's just, it's unnecessary. It's, it's almost more of a burden than, a, than a, a benefit. They kept the grass down, but those weeds are getting crazy. So, and those things grow so quickly. What we've been doing is- They grow so, like weeds? Yes, they do. So it's been, um, extra dry this time of year. So April, March, April, May is pretty dry. So we'll, we have to water all the grass and make sure all the plants survive. With that, what that also does though, is it you know, gets the weeds to grow like crazy. So, you know, it's, it's a double-edged sword in that regard. And for those that don't know, these are the radiated tortoises. Yep. And again, these, as you can see, they have plenty of grass. They're not keeping it down. So I I would say this is a great size of thing for them. They have constant water flow. These guys are the hyper redfoots. You can see they're just waking up. Uh, okay, there's like a whole group of them right there. Yeah. And, then this one. and you got quite a bit of these hypos now. Yes, yeah, there's, I think I have about a dozen of them. Which I mean, they're not super common tortoises. No, no, they're not, I mean. They're not super cheap tortoises either, but I love them. You know, redfoots do so well in this climate. Um, so they're a great animal to have here. They're just one that I love, you know, it's not a, there are some rescues. Um, with the Tegu group we got in last year that we rescued, uh, there was some hypos in there, which is an awesome benefit for me. But you know, guys, I've always wanted, I've always loved tortoises. I've always wanted hypo redfoots, morph redfoots. Uh, just because they're stay smaller, they're a great pet, um, and they're they're great in tropical climates. So this is one that you know I just simply wanted to have, and I think we're providing a great home for them. 
Uh, but again, the enclosures are looking great. There's plenty of grass. There's not too much grass. It's not getting overgrown. They're not uh, chewing it down. So I think this is a great size enclosure for the amount of tortoises in here. And again, these are all babies, so they're gonna get much bigger and then they'll go out into a much bigger enclosure one day. So now that we circled back to see who actually came over, we got the Salcata tortoise and two female redfoot tortoises. Now these guys were picked up in a row home in Philadelphia. Uh, so I would definitely say they are really enjoying their lives down here. Now there's three other redfoots in here. There's 1.2, these are the two females. Two females here and there's two more females and a male. But guys, tortoises certainly have to have their beauty sleep. They are rather lazy animals. So I'm sure they are still sleeping away, but we'll have plenty of romaine. So when the others do come to the party, they'll have plenty of food to eat. And then the Burmese blacks are certainly making their way over here. So we've got a good group of them. I don't know the gender ratio, but I believe there's eight of them in here. So you can see they really mowed down this area. So this is another area that we're really going to hit hard this spring. We may actually section this off. You know, a lot of people do that for like horses. They section off a part of the pasture for the grass to grow. Uh, and then once it's established, then you can release them back into it. So you might section this off to let this grow, seed it and whatnot, or just sod it and let the grass grow back up. And then, because as you can see, they have plenty of grass in the back, but they're picky to this area. And it, it could be because they know this area is where they get fed so maybe that's why they just see this whole area as a feeding pasture so as we were talking about with crush you can see he how he has a deformed shell this is a very healthy burmese black shell like these guys are really low and wide but that one you can see is a little wonky but that one has great mobility gets around enjoys the pond these are pretty semi-aquatic so as you can see we have a big pond for them and they love to bathe in there in the mornings so it seems like the adults have their routine to coming in bathing and then they go about their day so i usually double back and all the scraps i have i throw to him because he's definitely a growing boy but um, he's doing awesome man i'm i'm so happy to see his progress i just got a facebook notification a couple days ago uh that i got him about three years ago so it's it's exciting to see where he came from, you know, as far as uh, just mobility to now he's moving around. I mean, I've had him, I've actually seen him lift himself up over here. He is, his front legs are up here and his back legs are supporting his whole body. So obviously he has a tremendous amount of strength back in those back legs. Uh, so it is great to see a tortoise that has gained so much um, not only mobility, but quality of life, because now this guy can utilize every inch of the enclosure. Uh, and maybe one day if he, outgrow, if he outgrows this, what we'll do is we'll put a little passageway through the greenhouse and have like a little pasture outside as well. So again, we have plenty of room for him if need be, but until, for now, he's doing absolutely awesome. I can't be happy with this progress. All right, guys, well, that wraps up the long-awaited update on the Tortoise Greenhouse. Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If, uh, if you did, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Also, check us out on Patreon. I'm going to put that link down below. Don't forget our, about our giveaway. If you guys want to come visit us, make sure to leave a uh, snake or uh, crocodile emoji. But in this one, actually, leaves a tortoise emoji. <laughs> uh, and if we see you guys on there, we're going to pick a winner at the end of April. And we're going to announce it May 1st of one person on YouTube to come down and then two people on Patreon. So make sure that you go check that out as well. Link will be in the description and we'll see you guys next time. See you guys.